a point on this. As a child growing up in a, in a Christian family, baptized Methodist, and, and I feel like the religion was imposed on me uh, in terms of some of the ideas like the, 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 um, the book of Revelations. In times, the idea of Armageddon, mm -hmm. that, that 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 imposition of future history, that the, kind of the hopelessness of, of trying to have any other kind of a different future history, I think was imposed on me, and, and, and I reject it and I resent it. That, uh, that that does not have to be the history that we find. We actually can mm -hmm. come out of that, but yet, if you're a firm believer in the Bible and the, and the end times, and our, that's that's an imposition of a future on you which which we do not deserve or, or does not have to be true. By the way, I would add, let's remember that this book that we call the Bible uh, was put together uh, from the Council of Nicaea on about 300 A.D. out of dozens of books, many of which are now called apocryphal texts because they all contradicted each other. And even in here, you have tons of contradictions. And that's the whole problem. I'm glad that in the West, and in America especially, we tend to pick out the parts that I happen to like about human dignity and all of these kinds of things. But I point out that other people take this book and they find a lot of other things in it. And so do the Muslims with the Koran. You can find good and bad stuff in the Koran and in many, many other religious books. We'll be right back. Uh, when we come back, we are going to talk about do money ministries give a bad image to Christianity? The ministers preach about how to live a victorious life, but they themselves have a private plane, make expensive trips to Hawaii, Fiji, qualified as business trips. We're talking about televangelist known as prosperity gospel does this boil down to misuse of donations made to religious organizations we'll be right back stay with us special for truth <laughs> So, Joe, the public face of Christianity might be smeared if all this is true. If uh, all this is true, meaning well, you mean these the televangelists and yes. the money, yes. Uh, I think un it's unfortunate uh, that there are some people who uh, literally take the words of, of the Christian gospel uh, that says, unless you believe in this gospel and unless you are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit with water you shall not be saved you shall die you shall go to hell this is the only means of salvation and they're in preaching this uh, they need to be supported they need to have funds come in so they, they can go on television they can reprint thousands of books they can travel all over the world. Billy Graham can hold uh, sessions in stadiums with hundreds of thousands of people. And all of that costs money. And it's unfortunate that something as simple as what the Christian faith, as I believe it, can be reduced to has now become a big business. Oh, by the way, we are joined by another uh, panelist, Hali Jilani, political analyst, also a chair of the Asian Task Force of the United Nations Association National Capital Area. Speaking of these uh, donations, um, uh, Chuck, what they are saying is that giving to church will prompt their divine repayment in life with a return as high as $100 on each dollar handed uh, up. And this thinking energizes the poor people but is it ethically r wrong? Uh, bribes work. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, now, for me, when I, when I, my understanding of the Bible and what I've read about it in terms of like the topic of poverty, which is a little bit of my background, where you have today 30,000 children dying every day from a simple lack of a, a simple vaccine or a 10 cent doll of antibiotics, and you have these televangelists spending hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars promoting the Gospels when most of the Gospels is really about serving the poor. Incredibly hypocritical. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's mind-boggling. And I would say probably has the greatest sin that, uh, what would Jesus do? That would be the, maybe the answer. What's your take, Holly? Oh, I completely agree with Chuck. I'm absolutely horrified that in parts of the world where I work on humanitarian causes with people who are definitely without means, like Chuck mentioned, where are all these evangelists then? I don't even see them in the poorest parts of America, for goodness sake. And I think it's an obscenity and it's an insult to religion. And religious figures like Jesus, who as far as I know, spent his whole life serving the poor. Very good. Uh, if, you know, what we have 
seen is, is a, 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 a departure from what Christ or Jesus is really all about. It, we talk in the New Testament, and those of us who believe this, as the love of Christ, uh, not the wrath of God. And, and the televangelists, many, many of them, speak about the wrath of God. In other words, the fear element that's put into the people. But if you love Christ, it's like loving a woman or loving a man, depending on your gender. Uh, you want to do things because out of love, not because of a wrath or because you have to, and not because of fear that if you don't put your money in this collection plate, you're going to be punished. And uh, that if you just put invest in this its collection plate, you're going to get 100% back. You know, but the other friend. thing is, the other thing is, Fred. Uh, people send millions and millions to these people. They have to these preachers. They have never even met. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you'll find anyone among us who would defend the hucksters and the charlatans. And you will find them in organized religion. You'll find them in the environmental movement. You'll find them throughout. Uh, throughout any free market economy, you're going to find people that are going to learn a way to make a buck. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, some have seized upon religion to make a buck. And I quite agree with uh, the remarks that have been made that this is, this is uh, twice an outrage, an outrage against humanity and an outrage against God. But let me put this in a moral context, okay? Um, first of all, I do not believe that poverty is a virtue, that being poor is a good thing. I believe that prosperity is a good thing and something to be as, uh, uh, aspired for because if whether it, your, the holy book is, your, is the Bible or whichever you pick, for those who say it is better to be poor, no, it ain't, okay? It is better to be prosperous, but it's better to be prosperous by working through your own efforts and being honest, uh, exercising your, your own uh, uh, virtues. That is what's good. It is indeed bad, as Fred and others have suggested for a religion to exploit the poor and to promise them something that uh, cannot be delivered. On the other hand, I think it is also wrong for religions to preach that poverty is somehow some kind of a good thing. It isn't. If the, the example of Jesus to the extent that it's, you know, be poor and humble, I don't like poor and humble, okay? I like prosperous and proud. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Joe, they are... They, they, when people question the, how prosperous they are, the, the evangelists, how prosperous, mm -hmm. they say it's a sign of divine grace. You know, they are I'll give you an example. My, my mother and father were born in Italy, and I used to ask my mother why she didn't go to church more often. And she said, because I grew up in, in Italy, rural Italy near Naples, and every Sunday we would have some monsignor or some bishop coming to preach us and he had gold rings on beautiful vestments he was chauffeured in by a fine car and he would preach to us this gospel look at the birds of the air and the fish of the sea look at the flowers of the field how God takes care of them don't worry about your poverty God will take care of you and he would leave the church with all of his finery and, they, and she would say He's not going to give me what he has. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I think it's also important to say that money is not a measure of moral worth. Um, to say that we want prosperity, that means that as an individual, I don't want to be in grueling poverty. I want to have good things for myself, for my friends. Uh, there are lots of things I want to do with my wealth, and that's a good thing. But it is not money as such. It's not that's a measure of your moral worth. It's what comes from within. That's a measure of your moral worth, and the nature of it. May I tease out something to what Ed said earlier? Ed, I totally agree with you. Being poor is no great thing. So, for those who claim to, you know, be basically serving God or this great abstract ideal called God, we ought to be able to help those who have nothing achieve the same equality and dignity that the haves have. But the problem is that as long as those who say they serve God are also taking from the poor, mm -hmm. you are never going yes. to have a prosperous mass around. No, you're absolutely right, and I think that okay, I would now, have some Senator, agreement. Okay, yes. uh, now, Chuck Grassley is conducting investigations. Should he play the role of a watchdog, uh, John? The, yes, I think so. Uh, as I said earlier... Uh, on religious matters. Yes, uh, I, I think so. On, on the fact that uh, there are charlatans in every organization, and uh, certainly there are in religion, 
and so somebody needs to to bring these people to town